welcome to the channel people today i have seven napkin decoupage diys for you and we're going to start off by taking this sola wood sheet and creating our own decoupage napkin flowers i personally purchased these off of the sola wood website you can also get these off of itsy and amazon i double checked for you you're welcome a little hack if you don't want to use these you could get thick white paper and decoupage over that or you could just make paper flowers completely up to you we're going to start this off by using these two napkins and to get that top decorative layer we're going to need to take all the little sneaky layers off of the bottom so we just have that one ply there are tons of little tips you can use for this if you are struggling or new to decoupage or you just want better information i do have how to decoupage videos i do have tutorials step by step please check out the description box i am linking them down there for you for our medium to attach our napkin i'm going to be using deco arts matte decoupage and just in case you're not sure what mediums to use i have a video on that too i will link that as well down in the description box to apply the decoupage i'm just using an acrylic paintbrush i don't really use sponges that often to apply or seal over because they can fray and make a mess on my project then i'm taking my dry sponge i picked these up in a pack from walmart and we are going to just press the napkin down repeatedly in place this helps to minimize wrinkles. And yes, the iron on method is one of the best ways to do that. But if you want to quickly carry on with your decoupage project, this, I can assure you, is a quick and easy method to minimize the wrinkles and continue moving on. We are going to do an iron on project at the very end of this video. Let those dry and then make yourself a little base. I just ripped off this square looking little piece of the solo wood and then started gluing down these sadly <laughs> cut oval shaped bits that I made. Listen. <laughs> You, if you are good at cutting, I, I do not do paper crafts. So this was a huge stretch for me. They were a little pointy. Okay. They were a little pointy. So I did kind of trim off the tips and I applied like a little berry from a Dollar Tree bundle that I had. I just kind of snipped some berries off there and glued that right in the center and then took our other napkin and started chopping that one up and glued that one down to make our second little flower. Believe it or not, people, this was easy enough, but just be mindful with the hot glue because ow, I got some on my finger, so I tried to take care of that and then <laughs> the flower went flinging across the room. I had to go find it. Here it is. We will see that in a better reveal later. I'm gonna use those on a project. For this napkin DIY, we're gonna give these little gnome ornaments upgrade. I picked these up at Big Lots on clearance last year. They're really rustic. I absolutely love these little joints. We're gonna use this napkin. Hey, I never perpetrated and said I was gonna use different napkins for every DIY, okay? I mean, I, mean, I could, I could. I probably have more napkins than anybody I know. <laughs> I also sell, if you're interested in any of these napkins, I do sell them on my website along with decoupage kits on my website. All right, now that we got that plug in there, we are going to add little accents right onto the hat area of the noon. And I'm only putting Mod Podge in the spot where I want the hat to be at. And I'm also kind of ripping the napkin in different sections along that wreath. So every single hat looks slightly different, but it all matches because of the color and the style. Once it's completely dry, I took an 80 grit piece of sandpaper to shave off our excess and I could comfortably rip the extra napkin off of the bottom parts. But you do not want to do this if your napkin is wet at all because you will just pull the napkin right off. So make sure it's completely dry before you go doing that. To create a little bit of division, I'm going to take some tacky glue and make a little line right at the bottom of our hat. Keep a gap there to put a little bit of hot glue so we can get an immediate bond with this ribbon I have here. And we're going to let that sit. And while that's sitting, we're going to bring in the glitter. And we're going to put more tacky glue at the very top where our little pom pom is and just sprinkle that sucker on up. And that's going to be it for these pieces. I just wanted to keep it super simple. And I love how these turned out. Hold up, I am on my way. Let's go 
to the ocean. Yeah, let's go outside. For this DIY, we're going to be using a Dollar Tree galvanized metal hanging piece and this piece and joy napkin. I wanted to show you guys how you can kind of see the beauty in a napkin and not use the whole thing and just cut it up into pieces to create your own unique project. And for this, I took some Waverly's chalk paint, let that completely dry so we had a nice base so our napkin pops on here. And then we took our medium, I put some at the very bottom, and then I cut the joy out with the little flower. Well, I ripped the joy out. I like to rip my napkins mostly. And then we're going to take our medium and just put it in the spot that we need to put it in to apply our little word here. One thing that's really important when you're working with napkins is to keep the Mod Podge to a minimum. Less is always more. I say whenever you're doing this stuff, the more Mod Podge, the easier it is to rip your napkin. And whatever is not applied, I like to kind of take take my paintbrush, a fan brush works really good for this a little trick. And you can kind of push down your brush underneath that napkin, see what isn't completely attached. And then you can gently say how I'm just using it to push it open. And then I can take it and push it back because you have just enough Mod Podge on the brush to be able to do that. So I want to start trying to blend the napkin in with everything. And I'm putting a little bit of gray paint on my finger and just kind of dabbing it. This is giving it a little bit of a textured appearance to kind of match that galvanized metal. And before you go dry brushing over it, you want to make sure it's completely dry so you can come back in and not smear your paints because if you try to do this over it while it's still wet it's just going to smear and it's not going to give you this textured appearance to look like your paint is kind of blending in with the galvanized metal take some sandpaper sand off your extra seal it on up and you're all done with this one These two metal envelopes came from Dollar Tree and we're just going to melt off all the extra bits <laughs> to make them nice and plain just red envelopes. They do sell plain metal galvanized ones if you want to just get plain ones. I particularly wanted these red ones for Christmas <laughs> even though it's Valentine's Day. I want to show you a little trick. I always talk about not using hot glue for your end all be all bond and this is why. Look how easy that just came off just by heating it up. Make sure you're using Gorilla Glue Gel or E6000 if you are DIYing anything. So this way you have a long lasting bond with your project. It don't just fall apart by only using hot glue. We are painting the inside of these envelopes. Just one easy coat of white chalk paint and letting that dry completely for our base for our little napkins. And I just ripped the Merry Christmas section out of the one napkin and we're going to just put that on here. I find that whenever I'm doing like a really small section of a napkin use my finger or just the brush that I'm having my medium on to apply it is simple enough to minimize the wrinkles to blend the napkin in a little bit I'm just taking a little bit more paint and kind of dry brushing around the edges and then I'm taking these two wood snowflakes and painting them white as well we're going to attach our flowers on here using some Gorilla Glue Gel. I want to make sure that these snowflakes stick on to our metal and this is a really good bonding agent for that. Sometimes less is more and sometimes I don't really care. <laughs> I can't help myself. I'm more is more and I gotta put it in there. So I'm taking these little twiggy looking pieces and I'm putting them on the front of our snowflake with some hot glue and Gorilla Glue Gel and then I am attaching our little flowers that we made at the very beginning of the video and we are going to attach them right onto the front of our little envelope. Decorate the inside how you want and that's going to be it for this one. For this next one, you're going to need two Dollar Tree palettes. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. I have <laughs> probably about 100 palette DIYs on this channel somewhere in the content because this is my jam right here. To attach the palettes, we're going to do that on the front, what I would typically use, and take some bits of painter's tape. <laughs> 
weeks. <laughs> I had laying around. Listen, it was laying around. It was easy. It just, it made sense. Okay. Plus I put some extras at the end as a brace. So once this hangs on the wall, it pops out just a little bit. I dry brushed some of our Waverly White chalk on here, completely dried that off. And then we are going to apply our napkin to this. I will tell you the best way to approach this is section by section and start in the middle or at the bottom or the top. Pick something and go from there. Don't just do the whole thing because when you go to cut the napkin in between these slits it is not going to be stuck on there properly. So little by little and then apply and then little by little and then apply let it completely dry i'm talking a good 30 to 40 minutes before you try to remove the excess napkin if you want to just you know leave the napkin on there then that's you but i can't do that so i take an exacto knife and i cut real close to the wood on one side and then we have the frayed bits left on the other side. Well, we got to get that out of there because that looks tacky and we can't have that on our wall decor. So I'm taking an 80 grit sandpaper and we are going hardcore on this. I also want this a little bit rustic so it's torn slightly. If you do not use a 200 grit sandpaper, once you've got all your crusty bits left gone, you're going to go in with a Mod Podge. And I do want to reiterate, I seal all these. So go over all of your projects. Once you're completely done, they deserve to have a top coat on them. I wanted to create a little hanger for this to just give it a little something extra. So I'm taking a square dowel I had laying around. You could use a round one. It will do the job just the same. To attach our little dowel, we're going to just take some twine and cut it to about six inches. Honestly, if you want to make this shorter or longer, that's completely up to you. I was kind of just eyeballing it. And you can attach this however you want. I am pulling the twine through the last gaps on each side of the rows. And then we are bringing the ends up to the little dowel. Next, we're going to bring in the stapler. <laughs> and we're going to staple these pieces onto our dowel. However... It never seems to go well for me whenever I'm trying to use a stapler. So, of course, first the staple didn't go in far enough. So I had to bust out the butter knife and then get the staple out of there. And then we run out of staple. <laughs> so I had to go get more staples. And it just, it was, it was something. It, it's so funny to me whenever you're making stuff, you don't plan for all these little things that just take you extra time <laughs> shit happens right but we get it done we get it done next i just took a bunch of floral bits and attached them on here also using the staple and some gorilla glue gel and that's gonna be it for this little piece Hold up, I am on my way i'm in motion let's go to the ocean yeah let's go These little rustic ornaments we're about to create might be one of my favorite things I have ever put a napkin on. I used three different size wood rounds and we're going to take this camper napkin and just dissect it. <laughs> we're going to do this by basically just ripping up little sections we want to put on our round pieces. And to give us a nice clean base for that, I'm just putting a light layer of chalk paint on here, letting it dry. And I did kind of dry brush around the edges just to make it look like that white is blending into our wood. So once we get our napkin on there, it just all looks cohesive. And of course, if you want to, once you get this on here, you can take a little bit of white paint and dry brush around the napkin as well to make it look like it's more blended in. It's completely up to you. If you want to, you can even drill a hole in these to put your hanger on it. I actually just stapled some twine onto the back of these. And if you have a napkin piece like with this one, it's a little too wide. So to get it to actually set in there, I'm carefully ripping off a little bit of it. And then we're going to just use our medium to attach the pieces and we're going to make it look like one. Now for this, I will say it is super, super, super quick. So just use a little bit of Mod Podge, 
tappity tap tap <laughs> that napkin on there and then just paint right over it i wouldn't even wait for it to dry to be honest with you because it's so tiny and it's already wet but you can see here how i'm just using the little tears and making sure they meet up so it still looks like it's all one you never know that there is a little rip in there and that's gonna be it for these We're starting out our bicycle reef with a piece of wood from Dollar Tree and this beautiful tis the season for believing napkin. We're going to prep our wood with one coat of Waverly's white chalk paint and let that completely dry. And then we're going to come back in with two coats of our medium and let that completely dry. This is going to take anywhere from one to two hours because you're going to need to put the first coat on, let that dry, and then apply a second coat and let that dry. And you're going to want to be generous. Lather up the ends of this piece of wood. So when we are ironing on this napkin, it is melted in there nice and good. If you're looking for more of a step-by-step -step on how to iron on, I do have this exact DIY down in the description box and a tutorial for you. So check that out. See how beautiful and thick that is. You want this to be thick. So this way as you are doing doing the iron and it's heating up it just gently melts in and it holds everything so well together i'm using wax paper here in the tutorial i said it was parchment paper that's because i grabbed the wrong thing okay i made a mistake i love all y'all that pointed that out to me i had to go back and check the boxes i was like man i grabbed the wrong thing so you know i'm human guys give me a break much love to all y'all that pointed it out for me i appreciate y'all so much but as you can see here it didn't matter that i used wax paper it didn't get sticky or anything like that it was just fine but parchment paper is usually what's recommended i obviously have used both and it's been okay so for this i'm using the entire napkin to cover the entire surface of our wood piece and you want to make sure you do this because if not your parchment or wax paper is going to stick to your project because it's going to get heated up directly onto the mod podge so then when you lift your paper up it's going to be stuck to it when you're finished and you have a nice heated layer on there go gently around your edges making sure that everything is secured and then just check your napkin around the edges i would wait about 10 minutes to make sure this is completely dry before sanding around to get the excess napkin off to remove the napkin i'm just using 80 grit sandpaper and i am going straight down with this if you decide to go back and forth motions you can fray the napkin since it is melted into this Mod Podge. So just be mindful of that. Now for the part you've all been waiting for, <laughs> the wreath. <laughs> this is a bicycle piece I picked up from Dollar Tree. If you're a long-term subscriber of mine, you know I do not do wreaths on here. <laughs> so you are in for a real treat today. This little wood piece had two holes I just kind of, you know, <laughs> ironed over. And I poked through them once the napkin was dry. And I'm just taking some zip ties. Or, I mean, I don't even, these are really not zip ties. These are honestly electric ties. Like you pull for electrical. Anyhow, you can use zip ties. <laughs> okay this is what I had this is what I'm using and I'm putting them through the little holes and attaching them to the metal I am not hot gluing anything on here because I want to make sure this is not going to fall apart I am zip tying and gorilla glue gelling everything down I wanted to put a beautiful bow on the side of this with some greenery and another thing I am horrible at next to wreaths that goes with a wreath is a bow so I turned to my girl Sammy at Unicorn Dust Designs, obviously, because 
guess who has a bow tutorial <laughs> video? My girl. So I watched this video and followed it as best as I could because <laughs> I am definitely not bow equipped here and created my own version of her <laughs> directions. That bow tutorial will be linked down in the description box as well for you. So if you struggle with bows like I do, I highly recommend giving it a view because it is fabulous. She did a beautiful job. And honestly, I'm not even really sure how to <laughs> retell you how to do this other than to take different pieces, put them together, fluff them on out, and then put a zip tie at the bottom. And then we're going to cut these really cute on the ends. <laughs> There's my directions, how y'all like that. I used another little tie to attach the bow to our bicycle wreath and that is it for this one. That's gonna be it for this video, people. Thank y'all so much as always for hanging out with me. I hope you guys enjoy these DIYs and until next time, bye.